This is New York Nightly News with Chuck Scarborough, live on New York Nonstop. Earlier this month, a pilot study by the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Education discovered elevated levels of toxic chemicals, including PCBs, in the first public schools they tested. Understandably, that's raised some concerns among parents. And here to tell us more about the problem is Miranda Massey. She is the Director of Litigation and Training at New York Lawyers for the Public Interest. Miranda, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. First of all, tell me how dangerous PCBs are, why we should be concerned about them. PCBs are tremendously toxic. They're one of the very few chemicals that have ever been banned by Congress. They were banned in 1978, and they cause damage to the developing nervous systems of children. They're associated with childhood leukemia. They disrupt immune function. They're generally among the most poisonous man-made compounds around. And how, how dangerous are the levels that have been found so far in New York City schools that have been tested? These levels pose serious risks. I want to emphasize that they don't pose immediate risks. They pose serious risks to the long-term health mm -hmm. of children and school employees. Now, the EPA says there's no immediate cause for alarm based on what they're finding right now, but you think they're, that may be soft peddling a little bit? I think that EPA and the Department of Education have responded well to the situation in those three schools. Mm -hmm. What we need now, given how high the levels were, they were troublingly high, many times over EPA guidance levels, I should also emphasize. What is a guidance level? The guidance level for PCBs in the air is 100 nanograms per cubic meter for little, little kids, and it's a little higher when you get older. And, and the in, ones they found, for example? Were many times higher. We had up to almost 5,000. That wasn't typical, but in one case, 5,000. So that's 15 or 50, depending on the age of the child, right. times the limit. That's no good. It's imperative that mm -hmm. all city schools built in the relevant time frame mm -hmm. be tested and that air levels be brought within guidance immediately. How did the PCBs get into the schools? PCBs, people generally associate them with the contamination of the Hudson River, mm -hmm. but they were also used in construction materials, including caulk. They were used in light ballasts in some cases. For the fluorescent lights overhead, right? Correct. They, yeah. Correct. Sometimes paint, floor tile, and mm -hmm. they. Um, spontaneously leave the material they're in and enter the air. They spontaneously cause indoor air contamination and then they enter the body through breathing. Now is this caulk just around the windows is typically where you see it or is this, this caulk used kind of generally to patch cracks and around doors and things like that? It's window and door frame caulk for the most part mm -hmm. but it seems that the problem at the two schools where the levels were highest of the three, three pilot study schools actually came mostly from fluorescent light ballast. So another thing that we're requesting of DOE on an emergency mm -hmm. basis is that they check fluorescent light ballast to make sure that there are no fluorescent light ballast leaking PCBs in other schools across the city. It's more than likely, frankly, that there are. How much would it cost to retrofit the schools? It's going to be very expensive and we acknowledge that it's going to be a lot of work too. They've done a lot of work this summer on the pilot study and we're looking at a whole bunch more work. We don't deny that. If you look at the long-term costs of health care for those children and for school employees, uh, we think it's a bargain, but there's going to be a significant cash outlay and nobody's exactly calculated what the magnitude of that is yet. Okay, last question. Should parents be frightened about sending their kids to New York City public schools this fall? No, but parents should be demanding that EPA and DOA clean up all of the schools built in the relevant time frame. People should call the school's chancellor, Joel Klein, and demand that this happen post haste. Okay. Miranda Massey, thanks for coming in. Thank we you so much. It. Thanks. U.S. authorities have no idea yet what they were up to, if anything, but they doubt two men now being held in Europe as a